This is Dr. Eric Fishman for EHR-TV, and we're speaking with Brett First, Vice President of Healthcare for Covacent. And Covacent has done a wonderful job in getting a platform that will allow physicians all across the country to utilize software in a meaningfully less expensive fashion by using cloud uh, computing. And you've just recently inked a deal with the AMA that allows a number of different EMR products to be in the cloud, as I'll call it and uh, that's based on your platform. If you could discuss that a little bit, I'd really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Um, with uh, AT&T and, a and AME, for that matter, the, the, uh, the, the service that we're delivering is, is helping physicians with choice. Uh, um, what I, our belief and our client's belief uh, is that you're not going to have a traditional client-server kind of approach uh, where practices are going to be buying software and implementing it. It's going to be delivered through the web, through the cloud. And so what that does is poses, poses a few problems. Uh, problems like number of sign-ons as I get all these different apps, uh, um, the ability to get the information being shared between the, the, the spirit apps. So what Covacent's done with company customers like AT&T and Covacent is provide one uniform solution that physicians can easily adopt technology, see their data being passed between those different types of best breed of applications that they choose, and, then, and also provide the metering and the auditing for meaningful use so they can see the outcomes and the utilization taking place. I, I thank you, Robert. I've routinely said that small practices, one doctor, five doctors, 10 doctors, absolutely they positively should use software as a service. What is your opinion about larger practices, a 50 doctor practice, a 100 doctor practice? So, um, uh, you know, the target market for like the AMA is certainly the, that, that, that three to five doc office, but for AT&T uh, and, and the larger practices, the IPAs even, um, uh, the solution there is that um, they still are going to be forced to share information with, uh, with other institutions, other physicians that might not be within their practice, and what that does is it lends itself all, already to be using the cloud as far as for interoperability and messaging. And so, so let, let, me, let me differentiate, certainly in IPA you've got 100, 200 physicians, but they're in disparate locations, yeah, yeah. cloud computing's perfect. If you have a physical location, yeah. 100 doctors, yes. do you think that client server is a viable option, or is it your opinion, and I just don't know, that all practices should be in the cloud at this point in time? Well, I, there's, there's, I think there's really a hybrid. Um, you know, they're, they're, if they've made an investment, our model is, if you made an investment in a practice management system, Keep it. or God forbid, an EMR, then great, let's use, utilize it, right? But still, there's going to be solutions that might be e-prescribing, disease registries, things that you're going to want to inter interact with through the cloud that's gonna, uh, that, that poses that problem of interoperability, which we focus on. You said that there will be a variety of apps, uh, sort of almost like the iPhone store, the yep. app store. Uh, t tell me the variety of product styles that will be there. So labs, disease management and registries, uh, radiologies, imaging, um, and actually what's very, very interesting, it's not just clinical, so administrative uh, streamlining opportunities around uh, eligibility, uh, um, uh, uh, revenue cycle management, and then actually uh, the other on our app cloud solution, we also have content providers, uh, uh, Al Sevier, uh, uh, um, uh, Henry Schein, uh, folks that's, that brings this rich environment, and so if you take like the AMA solution, they're wrapping their 170 year history of search and JAMA and content to provide a really rich experience for those physicians that choose to adopt. Can, can, th thank you, Brad. Can you describe a little bit more for the viewers the relationship you have with the AMA? Sure. What, what, what does it entail? So basically, we are the platform as a service model. We're the service that underpins underneath the AMA brand. And then the, what they're doing is they're providing a, a full solution suite for the practices uh, that's based on our technology, but it's with their content and brand, as I've mentioned. So that they, they actually address the market not only as the clinician, a physician as a clinician, but as the business owner that they are, and also as the student that they are. So things like, you know, how to start a practice and procurement op opportunities. I, I, I read that book when I saw it in my practice. Yeah, yeah. AMA. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. And so they're, they're providing a more holistic experience, not only for the physician, but also really targeting the administrators and the staff in that practice as well. So I, and what the whole point of it is, what's risking all this is adoption. If the physicians don't go and adopt it and utilize it, that's where these, these solutions start to fail. They're providing a more holistic approach that hopefully that will drive adoption, and we're starting to see it already, and, uh, that is more commensurate with what the physicians have to day, deal with every day as a business owner and as a clinician. It's very interesting.
processing. You have a relationship with AT&T as part of this Absolutely. process. Explain how they come in. So AT&T has really two great targets, uh, market segments. One is uh, uh, at, at a statewide backbone level, uh, um, what, you know, as with the air funds that were just released for most of the states, they have a, a unique position of being that broadband connectivity. What they're doing with Cobison is leveraging our infrastructure to, to, to start at, you know, providing the access of movement of, of PHI information, uh, vetting of credentials of physicians, uh, movement and interoperability between EMRs and practice management systems. We're sitting on top of that broadband connectivity, which is a great, great platform. Then, making it extensible to things like telehealth, mo mobility, uh, uh, and also, finally, leveraging their relationship with hospitals, where they also provide a lot of broadband and connectivity as well. So, you know, what, what, what AT&T announced was what they call healthcare communities online. And that is the bringing and convening together of those, those different uh, 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 ecosystems, as we like to refer to them, where you can bring telehealth in with health systems and interact with the state at a, at a backbone level so we can start exposing important information around community health, surveillance, uh, uh, pandemic response, you name it. I love it when somebody's as excited about this industry as I am, and thank you. Are, are you aware of some of the companies, uh, I was speaking with Ingenix yesterday, and sure. they said that they have a relationship with the AMA, yeah. and it seems like it's part of this uh, system that you're putting together. Do you know some of the others that are involved in that? Uh, Dr. First, Allscripts, uh, Henry Schein, Elsevier, um, uh, EMD, uh, LifePoint, so uh, Quest. Quite a number. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, what we're doing is, if you think of the iPhone, it's great, it's a great platform but it's the app store that really makes it, right? And so what we've done is our platform, Cobosin, has added App Cloud, which allows for that, that again, convenient of the best of breed vendors and, and partners and solutions. So hopefully we're going to expedite the health IT adoption and make it easier for brands like AMA and AT&T to get a foot in the game. And what is your name for that uh, cloud? Uh, you, you've got a specific name for app it. App Cloud. You call it the App a Cloud? Uh, it's Covacent's it, App Cloud. It's our okay. trademark uh, uh, solution. Okay. Yeah. Now, Covacent is uh, part of CompuWare. If you can describe yeah. uh, CompuWare as a company, that would be helpful. This is great. Uh, um, for, well, for us, CompuWare acquired us in 2004. CompuWare is one of the ninth largest software company in the country. Um, what they focus on, and they're, they're world class in, is monitoring uh, application availability. So now think, as we talk about ecosystems that we're powering, what we're able to do is take tools like Vantage and Gomez, world-leading solutions that monitor over the web application availability. So what we're doing is we're, we're empowering states and large ecosystems that not only we're, we're providing a network where you can provide that interoperability and connectivity, we're giving you tools to survey the landscape. Is this application up? Is this hospital avail uh, lab available? Is, is the latency of data being provided by this payer starting to uh, degrade? It's a, it's a full, it's a, it's a uh, again, uh, platform as a service approach. But I, I think I touched on about 2% of what it is that you might be interested in telling us, uh, so keep going. <laughs> Um, you know, I think what's, what's interesting for us is that you know we often get confused with applications. Right. And, and um, if I gave an analogy of, uh, of you didn't have CNN before you had Comcast cable, right? So we're that we're that cable company. Well, you got to have base cable in place so that you can live, give these vendors at the show the opportunity to, uh, to plant themselves, expose their solutions. And what we handle is the movement of data to and from, which is right dead square in the crosshairs of where meaningful use is heading. So we feel that we're uniquely positioned. Um, we feel like we got a story to tell, a value proposition, and because uh, we've made about a $300 million investment in that platform that we're, we're using to accomplish all this, I'm mitigating risk and I'm lowering your cost of entry for those solution providers that want to take advantage. It's, it's wonderful. And so, as a physician, I may be interested, I've got a one doctor office, I want to buy an EMR, would I contact the AMA and they would tell me which different specific brand name products are available? Absolutely, they have a whole packaging, a bundling approach that makes it very easy for physicians, and even right by, by discipline, uh, a cardiologist versus maybe a, a internal medicine. I mean, you know, it, by discipline on, on a, bringing a suite of solutions together, that makes it very easy to adopt uh, and start utilizing day one. How recently has this service of the AMA been available? Uh, we've been actually in what we call soft launch beta for about the last nine months, but now we're going to national launch in, in, in April where uh, uh, tens of thousands of physicians are being targeted uh, day one and then a more retail storefront uh, approach across the country you later. You said April and you said day one. Is this an April Fool's joke? No, no, not, not April 1st. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody launches software on April I know, 1st. I know. <laughs> Uh, Brett, it's been a pleasure. Oh, it's very interesting. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, Dr. Eric Fishman? We've been speaking with Brett First, Vice President of Healthcare for Covicent. Thank you.